the Ballast Water Management Convention entered into force in September 2017. The BWM Convention has three main aims. Minimising the uptake of organisms during ballasting. Minimising the build-up of sediments in ballast tanks, which may harbour organisms. And undertaking ballast water management measures, including ballast exchange at sea, to minimise the transfer of organisms. The Ballast Water Management Convention defines ships very broadly as submersibles, floating craft, floating platforms, floating storage units, floating production, storage and offloading facilities. The Ballast Water Management Convention does not apply to ships not designed to carry ballast water, ships only operating in waters of one party's jurisdiction, Ships only operating in waters of one party's jurisdiction and the high seas. Warships, naval auxiliary ships or other ships, only operated by a state on non-commercial service. And ships with permanent ballast water in sealed tanks. The United States of America has established independent ballast water management regulations. The U.S. Coast Guard USCG regulations entered into force 21st of June 2012, affecting all vessels trading in U.S. territories. The USCG discharge standard is similar to the IMO discharge performance standard D2. This means that a ballast water management system using treatment technology must be installed. On the 2nd of December 2016, the USCG issued the first USCG Ballast Water Management System Type Approval Certificate to the Norwegian manufacturer Optimodien RS. All ships calling at US ports and intended to discharge ballast water must either carry out exchange or treatment, in addition to fouling and sediment management. According to USCG regulations, they also need to clean ballast tanks regularly to remove sediments. Rinse anchors and chains when the anchor is retrieved. Remove fouling from the hull, piping and tanks on a regular basis. Maintain a ballast water management plan that includes the above, in addition to ballast water management. Maintain records of ballast and fouling management. And submit a report form 24 hours before calling at a US port. The exchange of ballast water will only be allowed until the implementation deadlines for treatment systems. As the first USCG type approval was not issued until 2nd of December 2016, the USCG extended the deadline for compliance with the treatment standard. This allows ship owners to use an alternate management system and apply for an extension to the compliance date. The possible extension, which was initially 2018, has now been extended to 2022. Those with a granted extension may apply for an additional extension. The BWM Convention is divided into 22 articles and an annex. The annex is an integral part of the convention, meaning that reference to the annex is the same as reference to the convention itself. The headlines for the individual subsections of the Annex guide you to the relevant requirements. Sections B and D are of particular importance to ships. The Convention and the Annex call for a number of guidelines to be developed to guide the implementation of the specific articles and regulations. There are 14 guidelines in total and they are often referred to with the letter G and a number, for example G2. The process for achieving compliance with the Ballast Water Management Convention can be carried out as a seven-stage process. Some steps may be carried out in parallel. Understand your obligations under the IMO, USCG and local regulations. Do you need to comply with D1 or D2 and when? If your ship is entering a US port and planning to discharge ballast water, 
ballast water exchange or treatment must be carried out, in addition to sediment management. The USCG also requires a ballast water management plan, clean ballast tanks free from sediments, and a report which is to be submitted to the US authorities 24 hours before arriving at a US port. Review the current shipboard ballast tank, pumping, and piping arrangements. Multi use of tanks, for example, tanks used for ballast and storage of grey and or black water. Be aware that sampling shall not be carried out during stripping operations due to mixing of dry water with ballast water. Start developing your ballast water management plan at an early stage. It can then be reviewed as your preparations for compliance proceed. Select and install a ballast water treatment system. Selecting and installing a treatment system needs careful consideration and planning. You will need to ensure that plans are submitted to class for approval in good time and that the system and any ancillary equipment are delivered to the ship on schedule. Further, if you plan to operate in US ports, be aware the USCG has more stringent criteria for ballast water treatment and approval of ballast water treatment systems than those of the IMO. Develop training for ship staff and ensure they are adequately trained in ballast water management operations. A staff training scheme has to be developed and included in the ballast water management plan. Develop a final ballast water management plan and submit for approval. The final version of the ballast water management plan needs to be approved both internally and by the ship's flag administration. Approval is often carried out by a classification society on behalf of an administration. The final stage is survey and certification. When all preparations for compliance are complete, arrange for an initial survey of the ship for issue of an International Ballast Water Management Certificate or Certificate of Compliance. The BWM Convention entered into force in September 2017. From that date onwards, ships may be subject to inspections by port states to determine if they comply with the BWM Convention's requirements. These inspections are limited to verifying certification, inspecting the ballast water record book and sampling ballast water in accordance with IMO guidelines. In 2014, the IMO adopted guidelines for port state control under the Ballast Water Management Convention. These provide basic guidance for conducting port state control inspections to verify compliance with the requirements of the BWM Convention. They are not intended to limit the rights the port state has in verifying compliance with the BWM Convention. As part of the inspection process, port state control has to find out if the ballast water contains harmful aquatic organisms. The procedure is a four-stage inspection. Stage 1 Initial inspection to check that ballast water management plan is met. Stage 2. A more detailed inspection to check the operation of ballast water management system. Stage 3. Sampling. Stage 4. Detailed analysis and samples to verify compliance with the D2 performance standard. We have now reached the end of the second chapter. We have had an overview of the Convention and the Annex and learned where to find the applicable regulations. We have considered the regulations for control and enforcement of the Convention. Finally, we have had a brief look at the more stringent requirements of the USCG on ballast water management.